Now, I just pressed Alt and Tab on my Mac, and it actually ended up changing this to a different window. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're gonna do a bit of a different kind of style video. I'm gonna dive into some of the stuff that I do technically that save me hours a week that I don't even think about anymore because they're in second nature at this point. Now, you may be wondering, is one of the tips drinking this coffee and being drugged up, as in drugged up, I mean caffeine up. No, we're talking about productivity app tricks. We're not talking about the, you know, like so the intangible sort of, or even the physical or metaphysical kind of things. We're talking about tangible clickety clack ways in order to save time. And the first one is actually similar to how I just tangentially went back and forth with something, which is very similar to this back and forthism, which is pressing Alt tab. Now I just pressed Alt and tab on my Mac, and it actually ended up changing this to a different window. And for those of you that are unaware, Alt tab essentially just means going back to your previous window. I even have this on my mouse right here. When I press this button, it ends up going back to the previous window. The way that I have it set up essentially is that for Mac OS, there is a free product called Alt tab that allows you to go back and forth like this. This is extremely helpful with a lot of different things. Going back and forth between two different windows that you're in, especially when you're in a one screen working environment is extremely time effective. If I were to go here, go back like this and be like, oh wait, nope, I have to go here because there's multiple windows. Got it. That took me approximately six to seven seconds to do. Now you might be saying, is just pressing Alt tab and making it a half a second to a second thing something that really matters that much. I would say yes, especially if you're somebody who's in the data entry world and need to go back and forth and or maybe copying and pasting some things. Uh, the reason for that is, what's an extra five seconds if you're switching between applications? I don't know, like a hundred times a day? I know that sounds like a high number, but it's might not be if you consider how often you switch between what you're doing. So let's say 100 times per day, you save five seconds, all right? Now that's 100 seconds a day, which is a minute and a half, which is fair to say that per week, you know, saving 10 ish minutes. Now, I didn't start off with a heavy hitter on the outside looking in, but when you end up adding up bits and pieces of these hacks, you'll see how you save hours per week. So, that being the first one, here's another one that you may or may not be aware of that is minor, but pretty important. So, if I'm typing anything, my second hack is that I don't press the backspace button on my key. I don't press the backspace button on my keyboard without doing this simple trick. If you're on a Windows computer, you, just like with the Alt tab, have a default setting that makes this very easy. And if you're on Mac, it is a little different. So just to clarify, if I'm typing something and I notice that I ended up having an issue with what I typed, for example, I typed ig I'm typing, you'll notice here that I could press backspace and spam the heck out of the button, or I could do one of three things that the average person does not seem to do. One is if I'm on Mac, I can hold down Option and Backspace, and I can delete a word at a time. If I'm on Windows, it does the same thing by having Control and Backspace one at a time. If I am on Mac, however, I can actually hold down Command and Backspace, and it deletes everything on that line. So say I'm typing, typing, right? And I put Command Backspace, it'll delete a whole line. This is very useful if you wanna go back and just like, you set a couple things and are just, rather than, as you can see, I quickly got rid of it, right? Rather than doing something along the lines of backspace, backspace, or holding it. This is the most atrocious experience of all time, holding a backspace, no. The, level up your typing. Another thing you could easily do is if you want everything within multiple lines to be removed, just press Command or Control A, select everything and backspace. Or alternatively, you could double select the line and delete it or have a mouse keyboard shortcut where you can Control A by swiping your hand up, pressing delete without even needing to use the keyboard. Command backspace, option backspace, Control A, and delete all of these things are so much more effective than just holding backspace. And considering some of you are slow typers as it is, I do think gaining that time back is pretty invaluable in day-to-day -day life when you realize that you're wasting I don't know, minutes a day at minimum, right? Holding backspace or not knowing how to control A or 
do any of the delete one word at a time or multiple lines or one line at a time. Simple tips and tricks on how to use a computer with Dimitri. Number three on my list, which also baffles me that this isn't a thing people just normally do, is that, uh, did you know if you hold control or command and press the back bracket on your keyboard, you will go backwards or you will go forwards in the majority of products that exist. If I go to any browser and I press command backwards and command forwards, I can go back and forward between what tabs I had and what tab I'm currently on. What I mean by that is if you're going to ever go back and forth between specific pages in an app, which does happen, or you need to you know, go back and the, the way to navigate back to the previous page is bad. If you just make it a habit to know how to do back and forward, uh, that never becomes a problem again, okay? That's like seriously the, the smallest thing that most people are just blissfully unaware of that blows my mind. Now, what I actually ended up doing here was I swiped to the left and swiped to the right with the key bind on this. And this Logitech MX Master 3 actually has a capability to not only have the key bind set up, but in the gesture set up here, it actually has a back and forward option, which means that it's actually set up to figure out what the key bind is within every application you're in for going back or going forward. Now it's just a habit for me to flick my wrist left and right, and boom, I can go forward or backwards in any application that I want, which is pretty wild. And another small time saver that adds up. Now I have an alternative to this, which is just more like tab navigation, which is having a key bind on your you know, mouse or just understanding the key binds for opening and closing tabs in whatever you're in. Going here and ticking this or here and ticking this is something I used to do in 2018. I don't know, it's been a while since I've done it. Watch this. Notice how much easier that is? Wild. The way that you can do this is by essentially pressing Command T and Command W in any browser or Control T and Control W in any browser. And if for some reason you wanted to close a tab and then reopen it, you can also do something else which would be command shift T and that will open up your previously closed tab. I really like this because it saves me a bunch of time when navigating, not only in applications, but also inside of a web browser. All of these little things save you about five seconds here or there. However, if you add up all of this stuff in your entire workflow across everything, this cup of coffee does wonders, but if you get five seconds better at like everything you're doing. And I'm not saying this in a sense of like micromanage all the ways you work. I'm just pointing out if you consistently have slightly quicker ways of communicating with the device that you do work on, you will get A, more work done, or B, you will learn quicker about how to do things, which will then help you get more work done. Saving 10 seconds, you know, if you do a ridiculous amount of tasks on a computer every day is huge. Like, let's just extrapolate this example. You work eight hours a day at your computer, let's say. Let's subtract that to more like five hours a day for five days a week, 25 hours of actual work. Cause let's be real, no one's actually sitting at their desk eight hours. I mean, some people are, but most people, statistics do not show that. So 25 hours, right? There are 60 minutes, that would be 1500 minutes a week. If you think you can use one of these every single minute, that means that, you know, you could save, let's say 10 seconds every single minute, right? So 1500, times point, let's see, 10 divided by 60, 1500 times 0.1667. All right, that's 250 minutes a week. I'd say 250 divided by 60, it's like four hours a week. Now you may be saying, okay, well, what, what is that a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. You effectively probably only work on a computer five hours a day, right? You basically are getting another hour a day. That's my whole argument here. It's not like it's really gonna like, shoot you to the moon of being the most productive person ever. I'm just pointing out a lot of people like will just keep working on a computer without noticing that there are some minor keyboard shortcuts and stuff that will save them literally hours a week. And um, it's just always surprising to me when someone spends like so much time using something and they're just blissfully unaware of a couple things that is within their literal reach that could save them so much time. If you like this video and wanna see more about how to improve your skills using apps, productivity tools, or you just like seeing me, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out this video on how to improve your skills using productivity apps like this even more right here.